Welcome to the Bio Balance Healthcast, episode number 379. Breasts, what men perceive when they look at them and what that tells us about men. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So, as some of you may know, Dr. Maupin recently opened a medical spa uh, as part of her practice. And her goal in the medical spa, as well as in the, uh, the regular medical portion of her, of her practice, is to identify and provide ways that people can be healthy, as healthy as possible, for as long as possible, so that they get the maximum amount of vivacity uh, and uh, activity in their lives. Productivity. All, all and of enjoyment. These we want to keep you as good as we can keep you for as long as we can help you. Some of that is cosmetic, and some of that is clinically medical. And so we've tried to create opportunities where both aspects can be looked at. And one of the things that we want to talk about today is that uh, men and women who come to a medical spa for treatments regarding you know, skin care, uh, you, you, do I have a, a sunspot on my head that's going to turn into cancer? Should I have it lasered off? I have an ugly spot of hair somewhere that I want removed or taken care of. I don't of. want to shave my legs anymore. I don't want to shave my legs anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to go get a Brazilian thingy. Uh, Every month. Because it's painful. Yeah. And it's, and and it's expensive. tedious. So, exactly. so there are things that those who can afford to pay attention to that in their lives do pay attention to that in their lives. And one of the topics of conversation that come up is what about breast enlargement or reduction? You know, what is the ideal for women in America today? And why is that an idea? Why, why do we say that that is the to be desired? One of the, be one of the most common surgeries right. is breast enlargement surgery. Yes. And that's because society values breasts and men value breasts and as a symbol of as something a symbol of attractiveness okay and one of the thing women feel they want to be attractive to their their partner spouse uh, and after childbearing the breasts take a dive mm -hmm. they lose they lose um, the roundness they lose the perkiness they and so one of the ways to fix that is by adding volume so it increases the breast size. And there's several and different ways it. that they add volume and do that. And that's right. a that's an elective surgery. And it's that's... one of the most common plastic surgeries done throughout America. Okay. So breasts are very, very important to both men and women. The, the husbands or the uh, the partners are easily come up with the ten thousand dollars for the breast implants. And they're happy to do so because they want their their spouse or their partner to look beautiful, attractive, sexy, all of the things that we say about women who have a nice body, which is larger, larger than large breasts or large enough that you notice that they have breasts. There's a book that was written in the 1960s called The Status Seekers that was an effort to take a look at American culture mm -hmm. and identify markers by which we constantly, both consciously and unconsciously, uh, measured each other uh, mm -hmm. and, and measured ourselves against a standard. Mm -hmm. What kind of car do you drive? What kind of job do you have? What kind of title do you have? What kind of purse do you carry? What kind of purse do you carry? What shoes kind of do you shoes wear? do you wear? Yeah, all I those mean, things. Those things are, are all status, status, symbols. status symbols. So are breasts, is mm -hmm. the point. Because they're... Uh, level of attractiveness, I mean, both for women, mm -hmm. a woman says, I feel better, I feel more attractive, I feel more desirable, I feel more, I have more to offer to the world because people pay attention to me. And for men who say, my woman is of this 
quality or caliber Gives them that enhances my status. Right. So we always want somebody on our arm that makes us look better, not makes us right. look worse. Right. We want and to be associated with positive outcomes. And, and honestly, I don't think this is a new thing. This is no, like it's forever. No. Forever. It's been that since we have had societies, this has been common. One of the things that um, we looked, we had several papers that we looked through actual science research <laughs> on well, breast let, size. Me, let me tell this part. Okay. So, so my wife found this article in some online trash thing she was looking at <laughs> about men and, and their attraction to various sizes of breasts. And the discussion was, you know, why do men like large breasts or do men like large breasts? And, and what men like and, them? Exactly. Well, is and there so a difference? she sent it to Kathy as a joke and sent it to me and we were talking about it. And then Kathy said, well, wait a minute. You know, this really <laughs> does come up. This really is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Can we take this particular article and and make it become a real thing and i said no because it's i said it's but not, there, there's got to be research behind this <laughs> yeah so we, we need some science here so then i did some research and i did uh what did i look at i looked at the uh the archives, archives of sexual, of sexual behavior. behavior and he read the whole thing he read all the archives yeah then he started working on the paper <laughs> so so i read real scientifically produced literature and what i was interested to find at the end of it is most of the salient points that were made in the archives of sexual behavior were the <laughs> same points that were made in the trash piece you know, because the, the trash piece journalism. was just entertaining yes but it did give you the but same it was information based on something. and so i was pleasantly surprised to see that and, and kathy said well you know we need to take this somewhat seriously because we have a lot of men and women that come into our medical offices and our medical spa offices who want to talk about that and we don't do those procedures we no, don't, we don't do we enlargement refer, or reduction we refer for them if we feel that i mean we refer to someone we that we think is a good conscientious plastic surgeon if the patient finds this to be something really important to her and and spouse yes but i have a personal i have a personal sure. experience because after i had um after i had rachel i tried to like get my body back mm-hmm. i didn't get my body back and my husband goes oh it's fine it's fine who cares you know that it, who cares if everything shrunk and you know, I didn't, I wasn't fat. I just, I had no breasts. So, so I went and I had an, I had implants. He hated them. He was like, oh, oh, they, I granted, I think they were, too, they were, I just wanted little implants. He just, he was, he loved the plastic surgeon loved big breasts. And I should have thought about that first, but so <laughs> he gave me a lot more than what I had intended. So eventually my husband hated it. He thought it was it made me look unnatural unnatural, and it didn't balance and, or it didn't balance my hips. It was, I was larger than my hips and he's like, just get them out. And I did. You know, that's I, I mean, you I just, that, I, now it's just me. The science know? article talks about a number of factors, physiological factors that men look at in assessing uh, mate ability. You know, are you uh-huh. going to be a potential mate for me mm-hmm. uh, when they look at women? And mm-hmm. one is waist to hip ratio right. and one is breast size. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is facial cueing, how animated and alive and vibrant mm-hmm. is your, are your facial expressions and mm-hmm. you know, your eye contact. I mean, there are so many. If you've got nothing else, that's a good one to keep, to get. <laughs> yes, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> because that, that stays with you even if your body doesn't. Right. And, and so talking about your husband's response to, to getting implants is, is fitting with what the science says. It, because the, the research says that. You essentially are looking at what is a man's uh, mating strategy. Is uh, is he looking for a mate to have a long-term relationship with who will be the mother of his children and raise his children? Or is he just looking for a, a woman to have a quick sexual encounter with? Mm-hmm. So is he looking for a, a random, quick sexual encounter? Or is he looking for something that's a long-term commitment? And for those that are looking for the long-term commitment, Physical attributes attributes are included, but but so are emotional social attributes. Mm-hmm. We want to know that there's a level of, of warmth and endearment in your personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to know that you are trustworthy, that responsible, you're so you will be responsible to raise children, children, but also to be faithful in the relationship. Mm-hmm. If we're going to commit our resources to supporting mm-hmm. you and the children that you generate, we want to make sure that those children. Come from us. Yeah, this is biologically all anthropologic. Yes, it's all anthropological, kind of. uh, and it, rarely 
Are you going to find a man or, or men sitting around at, at a bar somewhere having a conversation about these are the traits I'm looking for? It's, it's not a thing that we cognitively analyze. It's a thing that we instinctively see and respond to. Right. It's, it's, it's kind of hardwired. Yes. So you don't notice men don't. I've learned from this discussion that men don't notice in their head, they're going, they're not looking at a woman and going, Oh my God, those are great breasts. They're, they're <laughs> in their head. They're going, she's attractive. So one of the little, little paragraphs in the research that was found in the sexual behavior uh, article said, female breasts are one of the secondary sexual traits that attract male attention and influence male judgment of attractiveness. So, and they do, and they do. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's out there. It's not, you don't, I mean, for, you can't go look, see somebody in public and see their vagina. So you have to look at something else. Yeah. <laughs> so this, I mean, this is something that is hardwired and for good reason, it's on the outside. Well, one thing that is interesting to me, because I think it's, it's a cultural distinction. Uh, and a lot of this, and we get further into discussion, we'll talk about how, how much of these perceptions are culturally dr driven but the literature says men most men in american culture prefer larger breasts than larger buttocks and there's there there are but that's cultural people in the popular culture right now that are famous because they have large butts right uh and there's a whole element uh of perceived attractiveness that's driven by that. Mm -hmm. But that's not the standard for most people and, in and, our, historically or currently. And, and this is, I like, I like to mention that feeling attractive, which right. is why we have the spa, right. because feeling attractive and looking in the mirror and being happy with what you see is an element of making you vibrant and feeling alive and feeling young and healthy. Like you can go out and do the things you used to do and it gives you confidence and you exude that when you think you feel or look good, mm -hmm. you feel good. Mm -hmm. So that's one of those things. So feeling attractive and then being attracted to somebody else are kind of two different things, but one leads to the other. When you feel attractive, you are more attractive to other people. That, that movie trading places yes. uh, with Eddie Murphy, mm -hmm. the, the, the end yeah. line of the movie, uh, one of them is on a yacht and he go and holds up a champagne glass and says, looking good, uh, Billy Ray and, the one says, feeling good, Lewis. Says, looking mm -hmm. good and feeling good are combinations to be desired. We both, mm -hmm. we want both of those things. That's right. So, so part of it is society says you have to have nice breasts to be attractive. Women are trying to fit that mold to be attractive to their, themselves and to their mates and to the rest of the world. Right? So yes. it's, it's, it's a women do that and men then appreciate the outcome. But, but how many times have you been in a bar with couples or a restaurant where everybody, the gals serving are buxom? Have well, and some great restaurants breasts, market that way. There's, right? there's a restaurant chain called Hooters, there's another one called Twin Peaks that are all about, you know, showing breasts. Yeah, and, and there are couples that, that go there, eat there, but the, the, the women are going, those aren't real. Those aren't real. Those aren't real. Yeah, those are real. No, those aren't real. See, they don't you know. But so, they never explain then, how they know. I no. Well, then they ask me because I'm supposed to be the expert because right. I've done yeah. ten thousand breast exams. How? I mean, but that's not about watching people walk. That's about. <laughs> I mean, you can tell by doing a breast exam, obviously. So yeah, yeah I would assume you could. Yeah, but but when you're watching somebody walk, there are some telltale signs. Okay. So, uh, so, so then I end up being the expert. So, but that happens to everybody. It's not just because mm -hmm. I'm a gynecologist, but that, that's one of the, because of course, if you had to buy them, they're not as good, which is not really true because <laughs> if you had to buy them, they're not going to age. I mean, by my taking mine out, mine are going to age. So, but know, the you artificial have, ones would not, they have. would not age. They would And by age, you mean sag, sag stretch. drop. Yeah, yeah okay. the new, the, especially the new implants are great. They, they look like a 16 year old breast. They're beautiful. Huh. So that, so yeah. And that works for people who don't have much breast, breast tissue, but I've known a number of women who've had breast reduction surgeries, not right. to remove once they had implanted, but who were so large mm -hmm. that they had back problems. Right. Or they had uh, concerns with health and safety of their breasts, 
And so yeah, they, they bump had, into everything. I mean, it's kind of like yeah, you know, your breasts enter the room before you do. So so that that can be an issue. But also, it what happens with heavy breasts or large breasts is that they start pulling on all your all the, on muscles, your, in all the muscles here, and and they do by gravity they drop over time. Yeah. So you end up not looking beautiful and buxom, but you have breasts that are in your lap. And there is something that can be yes. done, and it's not. In, terribly afford, uh, cheap, but it, but it's not terribly expensive either. Right, right. And in some certain cases, it hurts their back so cases, much that insurance, will, insurance pay will pay for it. But, right, it's but a that's little, rare. Cause that is rare. But when they take out skin, because usually, just think, there's so much skin. They take out skin, and so they have to do scars under the breast, around the nipple. They have to move the nipple up. So... There's a lot of manipulation there, and you may not get women may not get the sensitivity back to the nipple, uh, and so that that's an issue that they should know about they before lose, they have the they surgery. Right. So so you can be too little or you can be too big. I mean, there are are bad things about both, but small breasts don't sag. I mean, they just stay where they are in general. Right. So um, that makes them a lot easier to age with. However, we're talking about how men view breasts, and right. it has nothing to do with that, but that's just about how women respond to that, that beauty aspect. Okay. So in the research, both journal articles had a series of points that they wanted to make, and so we pulled some of those out, and we thought we'd just go through them. Uh, both articles emphasize the way a man perceives or considers female breasts in terms of attractiveness may be driven by his wealth his social standing and his overall level of hunger, and so what the hunger as in hunger, uh, literally hunger. hunger yeah. Okay, literally hunger. Hunger for stuff in life. Hunger for you know, am I satisfied? Am I safe? Am I? Do I have enough, uh, or do I want more? And so, so because Money, breasts women. do feed babies, yes, they are viewed as a nurturing, yes, a uh, nurturing uh, attribute. So. That that woman Unconsciously, would be psychologically. more nurturing because she has larger breasts. Yeah, and so unfortunately, you guys are never going to look at breasts the same again. <laughs> I mean, well, it was the, so simple before. One of the conclusions <laughs> was that wealthier, more established men then will be less focused on breast size, large breast size in particular. Right. Poorer, less established men will be more focused mm -hmm. on larger breast size. Right, and that's because. Because they're hungry. They're hungry for climbing the ladder of success yes. in society. Right. And so these are markers. These are evidence and, that you and, have acquired these these things. And and the research that they did yeah. it has come up with this. Now, that doesn't mean that every man who uh, doesn't have an intellectual job is focused on large breasts. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't mean that. But it does mean that people who are not don't have a present or future hope for a large income are, are there's more of those guys in the I don't want to say the type of bar it starts with the T and ends market. in a Y <laughs> bar. So yeah. I mean, there's more of those guys there because they're hungrier and they focus more on breasts. And what that does is they're focusing more on their fertility. They're look. They're they're the expressing their. The message conveyed their, is fertility and fecundity. And they pick partners who will ha be n good nurturers. So, good nurture, good good nurturing goes along with larger breasts because it's a sign of estrogen. If you have a lot of estrogen, you're more fertile. And and nurturing is considered to be more of a feminine trait. Right. And so those physiological markers of those feminine traits are what these guys are responding to. But the reason we they they figured out the difference in social class, yeah. they say is because the men are need to have more children because they have to climb the ladder through their children. But, it's the next generation. But the ancillary argument too, and this goes for wealthy men as well, is what is your sexual mating or hunting strategy? If mm -hmm. you're just looking for uh, a random encounter or frequent random encounters. Yeah, they found you're gonna that you're going to be looking for different things. You're going to, yes, you if are. If you're looking for a permanent committed relationship, you're looking for uh, 
moderate to large size press, but right. not extremely large, right. uh, not E and above. Mm -hmm. uh, as the, the results were saying, mostly uh, Up to C D. and D. Yeah, mm -hmm. C and D were in the mm -hmm. preferred size. And that, and and cup size is the same for somebody who's six feet tall or or five feet tall. So this, I, didn't know. So, I mean, it's just a cup size. The the re the rest of the bra is the thirty two, thirty four. It's is around what goes around around your you here. Okay. And and basically, it's a measurement of here, across here, and here in dressmaking, basically. Okay. Yeah. So that's what gets you the 32, 34, 36, 40. So if you're bigger, you can still well, have C and D. I thought it was the arc of the back across the muscles and no. Mm -hmm. well, it's a it's, lot. I know a cup is just what is yeah. the insert. Yeah, I understood in the bra. that, but so, I thought the other uh, the. the inch dimension mm -hmm. was more of a surround. It goes around, you, it, yeah. it's the circumference. Okay. So it goes around your back yeah. across, and there's yeah. three measurements that get you to okay. uh, thir 32, 34, 36. So I wasn't that far off. No, you weren't. Okay. The second thing, the general rumor that men prefer medium to large breasts tends to be true globally uh, around the world, but preferences may vary depending on breeding strategies for men seeking a mate, which we've already discussed. Mm -hmm. The wealthier you are in Western society, number three, the less driven you are to seek out large-breasted women as mates. Because you don't have to have – your success is not in your children, in having lots of children. Yeah. Your success is in something else. Attractiveness is judged by means of adapted psychological mechanisms that have evolved to identify prospective mates who will increase reproductive success above random selection. Right. So again, we're looking at the long-term commitment, the mm -hmm. relationship, the family nest, as opposed to just the random encounter. But men aren't just one-sided. They they do have one other hopes. things there. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are. They're they're more of a one-track mind than women are because we have to take care of the kids, anthropologically, not in today's society. But men are attracted to a number of physical characteristics in women, including youth and youthful look, which is why yeah. everybody goes to my spa, my medical spa because they want to get rid of all the signs of, of aging. aging. Yeah. And so do I. Face shape, overall symmetry, because symmetry is a sign of health. Is a sign of health. Yeah. And all of this takes place in behind the scenes. You don't look at somebody and take these pieces apart and say, well, I like the symmetry of her face. You just say oh, she's image. she's beautiful because yeah. her face is symmetric. Symmetry means health. So that's why that's why that's beautiful in almost every culture. Yeah. Uh, waist to hip ratio, that has a lot to do with not having ha had children before. Right. Your waist uh, measurement goes up when you have a child, even if you, you hardly ever go back to the exact same waist measurement because your ribs actually are stretched by pregnancy, mm -hmm. and that stretches your, your waist measurement too. So the rib, I mean, your waist measurement comes from your ribs. They're stretched out. But the waist-to-hip ratio has to do with what, if your hips appear to be uh, of a size that you can carry a baby and right. deliver a baby healthily mm -hmm. right. for both the mom and right. the baby. So you have to have, so you have to have a good waist-to-hip, but you also have to have a good waist-to-breast Ratio okay. that they didn't mention, but that's one of the reasons breasts look larger. Yeah, is because the waist is smaller. Or I mean, I was shorter, a, so I, I so so I was a dressmaker before I was ever a doctor or anything else. Back in your real back career. in my real career <laughs> when I was in college and high school, I, that's yeah. what I did. So those are things that you look at when you're looking at clothing. Mm -hmm. So the top should match the bottom. Yes, symmetry and again. Symmetry, yeah. top and bottom and side to side. Yeah, so, so it, somebody that's aggressively large on either end is not going to be as attractive or as healthy. Right, right. Okay. And soft lines in a face rather than angular lines mm -hmm. for a female face is always better. So that's why we're filling our face with filler so that we're softer Keep them. and not as angular, which comes with age. Okay. Okay. And then number six, more men are influenced by breast size than buttock size, which we've are also already mentioned. Number seven, men in developing societies and working and men from working class backgrounds have a preference for plumper women. Wealthier because men have a preference means, for skinnier women. Because that means they're the women are healthy and 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 fertile. Okay. 
But that's what the research says. Right, because skinny, you could be, if you're really skinny, that does not mean, that does not tell somebody that you're fertile. Number eight, men with long-term mating strategies tend to seek durable, high investment relationships. They value not only reproductive potential and physical attractiveness, but also non-physical traits like interpersonal responsiveness, loyalty, chastity, commitment, and parental skills. So they're looking for the whole package. And right. they're not just looking at your breasts, but your breasts are an indicator that you are physically healthy and physically capable of, of having and nurturing children. That's right. And, and, and that makes men attracted to you. And I don't think, you know, that may change with, with generations and generations, but it hasn't changed. But it since, hasn't in centuries and since, centuries since we and became, around the world. Yeah. yeah. Socialized. Yeah. So, so it's, it may be hardwired or it may just be, it has to be somewhat hardwired, but we don't think about these things. These aren't conscious. I don't believe at least it's, I never, you know, look at a guy walking by and go, oh yeah, he's symmetric and tall and he's got great shoulders. I just go, he's a good looking guy. Yeah. Well, and it works on both domains. So right. people are looking at it. Uh, and in the last two items, they talk about uh, what are called, what the literature is calling sexually restricted men and sexually unrestricted men. But it, that has to go with uh, what are their breeding strategies. Sexually restricted men are men that are looking for a long-term committed relationship or already have one. And so they're not going to be available for other sexual encounters. They're not going to be noticing or responding as much to these visual cues. Or they're not going to tell anybody uh, if they do. Of the <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just, yeah. 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 <laughs> if they may be responding, but they're not going to tell. <laughs> and then the sexually unrestricted men are the men who are, even if they have a long-term committed relationship, are okay. looking for the quick hit. They And, and the... The unrestricted men tend to focus more on physical presentation characteristics, not personality, because it's not faster. strength of care. Yeah. Well, because you aren't interested in that yeah, part of it. Yeah. You're I don't care if she has a brain. In, yeah, you know. in the physical part. It is, yes. And not the mental or emotional part because you're not looking for having to talk to them when they're 80. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, I, I guess... In conclusion, what we'd like to say is that it, if you are worried about your breast size being too small or too large, you're probably wrong. But if you decide they need to be larger, there are ways to get that done that are not inordinately expensive, but don't go too large because there are complications with that. Or your mate may and not like not them. not attractive. Your mate may not like them. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully that's going to be a familial discussion. Right. Uh, or if your breasts are too large, they, that can also be accomplished surgically. But outside of surgery, there are so many other things that you can do to hold on to your health and emphasize your attractiveness. Some of those things can occur at a medical spa. Right. Where you can get facials, you can get your skin rejuvenated, you can get your collagen uh, revived, uh, you can get hair removed that's unwanted but, you know, or unsightly. Some of the things we do with pellets, mm -hmm. we give women back their estrogen, yes. which makes their breasts plumper and more responsive. They look better. Mm -hmm. uh, and with testosterone pellets, that helps our muscles hold our breasts up so our breasts don't sag as much and we have better connective tissue over time. It takes about a year, but you notice that your breasts are a little bit higher and better supported. So we do a lot of things that affect the breasts. Even, I mean, even it you're, seems you're not kind directly of, manipulating the breasts, right? It right. seems kind of superficial for us to be talking about this yet. It is such a, an inborn. Yes. Ingrained uh, component. An ingrained component of picking your mate. Health and attractiveness. You ha Healthy people desire healthy people. Not even if they don't want babies, that's just ingrained. And it's, healthy people are more attractive people. Right. They're more vibrant. Right. And and if you're healthy, yeah, yeah. you look better. So, so I guess we'll say... Get healthy and learn to love who you are and what you what you look like. And and if you, I mean, losing weight helps your breasts look bigger because your waist gets smaller. So that always is good for the uh, New Year. Live discussion. as healthy a life as you can. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And know what your breeding strategies are. <laughs> that's right. And what your husband's or yeah or right. partner's breeding strategies are. All right. Thank you for listening. Yes. Thank you. 
Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.